This is episode number one of the Duck Showdown, or at least it was supposed to be, but we're off to kind of a rocky start. We have some problems. I have two models which can't compete in the sorry state that they're in because there just is not enough support. They really need to be fixed. So let's see what we can do to support those unsupported areas without adding supports so that they have a fighting chance. And we're also gonna go over the torture test for the next video, and I'm gonna need your help with that. So stick around. When I printed these models, I was using a 0.12 millimeter layer height and a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, and there just wasn't enough support. These are hollow and there just isn't access to remove any of the supports on the inside. Unfortunately, there just really aren't many options here. So these two models have kind of similar problems, but I don't think that we can use the same solution for both. This one has a bridging issue, whereas this one has an extremely severe overhang problem. So let's start with this one and see if we can make it right because these models take hours and hours to design. I want to give them the chance that they deserve for the showdown. First up, this model is named the Laminator and I think it's a really cool design with the four ports which are each then subdivided into four again and all of them are offset slightly from the center but they still have a slight overlap of the streams of air. This was created by Lapastique899 and he's an engineering student. He knew that there might be a problem with the overhang so in his email to me he suggested that if it was going to be trouble I could try resin printing or water soluble supports. Those options could work, but I'm no resin printing expert and I don't have soluble material, so I thought I'd try something a little bit different. I'm using the Chidi Plus 4 and this printer has a 4mm thread pitch on the Z-Screws because they're both a 2-start thread rather than the typical 4-start thread. I think we're able to achieve a very accurate Z-height change with this printer. So in Orca Slicer, I have the model set up and we're going to select Variable Layer Height. And then I can press the adaptive button and it might be nice to also smooth the transitions for a little bit better look. Now normally we have a 0.08 millimeter layer height as the minimum which is already very fine but I think this printer can handle even less. So I've changed the minimum to 0.04 millimeters and now we have this result. We're going to have a good overlap of the overhangs and hopefully that does a better job. Unfortunately, with the variable layer heights, we can't use tree supports anymore, so I'm going to set the supports to normal and fine-tune them a little bit. Let's give this a try and see what happens. I'm using Chidi's Purple ABS Glass Fiber 25, and this filament has the glass fiber set in the center, and it's supposed to have improved layer adhesion from the standard glass fiber. It was looking really good, and I don't think the Z-moves are a problem, but extruding these very minute amounts of filament could be a bit of a problem. So let's try adjusting the overhang speed down, and I'm also going to change the minimum layer height back to 0.08 millimeters instead of the 0.04. All right, so that didn't turn out too bad. Because the path is curved along with it being so little overlap, it was not able to close the top in properly. This is pretty good, but I think next time I'd leave everything as 0.12 and then adjust only the nearly horizontal sections to 0.08 and slow down the overhangs. The next duct I think is a little bit tougher to handle. This one is absolutely massive and looks incredible too. This one is called the UFO duct created by Cosmic Cupcake and it is the largest one that I have. It's not actually heavy because most of it is empty, but it might be a little bit too large and maybe it could collide with the frame too. So we'll have to wait and see what happens there. The issue with this one is that it's trying to bridge over that circular shape. So this is tough to solve if we have a look at what it's trying to do. It's bridging to a curve. Some of it is going to work well and some of it is not going to work so well. Now I spoke to Cosmic Cupcake about this and the intent was to print this with the mounting points up and lots of support below, but it came in originally for me the other way around. That would probably work, but I wanted to try to get it to look nice from below. So I went ahead and I printed a sample with no bottom on it. This is the same material, just a different color, and you can see the absolute mess inside here. So this is not anywhere close to acceptable and it's no wonder it didn't turn out properly on the top. So the slicer is having a difficult time treating these as bridges but also because of the circular shape it can't tie in properly to the walls. So I decided to make some little adjustments to the model itself. So I brought the original mesh into Fusion 360 and I converted it into a solid in order to try and work with it a little bit easier. I drew a shape with parallel sides between the ports and I extruded it down 
slightly below the original shell thickness. That shape extended beyond the shell towards the inside. Then I added a light chamfer just to make sure that it extended into the shell completely, but not through it. I patterned that shape 16 times to go all the way around. And then because I was having a little bit of trouble combining these parts together, what I did instead is change them all to components and then put all of the components within just one of them so that I could export them all at the same time. And then what it does is it will treat those sections as a bridged area. Unfortunately, it didn't quite turn out perfectly. You can see here, it's not too bad, definitely far better than the original. And I think there's still some room for improvement, but we're on the right track. I printed a few more samples with varying degrees of success and I was able to achieve this result. I did it by adjusting two more things. One was the bridge speed. I increased it dramatically so that it didn't have time to sag and that worked out really well. And the other was to activate bridge counterbore holes in the slicer and what that does is it treats this section like a bridge in its entirety and it connects really well into each of the walls. So with those little adjustments I was able to get to this result and I think this is a pretty acceptable final product. And with those changes, we went from this, which just was not acceptable, to this, which I think looks really good. So let's talk about the duct torture testing that I like to do. I like to use a severe overhang test, which I renamed the overhung. As one of the tests, I made a small change to it and now before the overhangs actually begin, it's lifted slightly off of the build plate and that's just gonna prevent it from kind of giving us a false idea of whether it's good or not. It doesn't have that support that it did in my previous videos. It seemed to do a really good job of showing the weaknesses of the different duct designs from all sides. And what I'd like to do is list each of the tests below in the comments there. And if you like the test, give it a thumbs up, or if you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. But if you don't like it, make sure that you give me a better option to do the job. And we'll do this for each of the high-speed torture tests. The next test I'd like to do is a hollow shuriken, a throwing star, which tapers up and it also twists as well. It should do a great job of showing cooling performance between duct designs. Thanks to Roxalt for allowing me to use his design. And I'll leave a link down below if you want to try this one yourself. We need a bridge test and this is kind of a tricky one. Bridging at high speed really isn't something that we would normally do. On the other hand, bridging is typically slow. And if we can bridge faster, that is gonna be a benefit to save us some print time. I see some bridge tests out there which are just one line and they're supporting something in the middle. And that's certainly an interesting test. But the bridges that I had in mind are actually layered. And I think this is important because those layers above the initial bridge extrusion affect the layers below and they're also gonna reheat them and they sag slightly when that happens. So what I decided to do is come up with a bridge model which turns around a central axis with different lengths and I've also raised it up from the build plate a little bit as well. The bridge test should give us an idea of overall cooling performance, the balance, and also is the air coming out of the duct forcing the bridge down too much during the extrusion. So again, vote down below if you like this one, thumbs up, thumbs down, and there is also a link down below for all of these models. Before I reveal the final test, hit that subscribe button if you're enjoying this type of content and don't forget to like it if you like it. The final test I think does need to be a Benchy, but not just a Benchy, four Benchies to be specific. These will be stern to stern so that we're gonna see what's going on from all sides. And because these are all high speed tests, I've shrunken them down to 75% of the original size and we can then keep the layer time as low as possible. So let me know in the comments if you like these tests or if you don't and get your suggestions in. There is still time to change things around a bit or add a test if we need to as well. Thank you to all of my subscribers for helping towards that goal to get this channel to that 100,000 mark by 2025. We're getting closer by the day now. And if you like what I'm doing here and wanna help this channel to have success, I have some affiliate links down there below for products that I've tested and that actually perform. I also wanna say a special thanks to each of my patrons for making these videos possible. And finally, the actual showdown between green and purple begins next week, and we will see you on the next one.